Shadow Priests are without a doubt one of the strongest and most rewarding hybrid casters in Wrath of the Lich King, bringing a harmonious balance between sustained damage, burst, utility, and crowd control. In this video, we're going to be covering everything you need to set up your priest ready for Season 5 Wrath of the Lich King Classic Arena, including the most optimal race, talents, glyphs, professions, macros, and of course, most importantly, gear. In order to put this guide together, we worked alongside Taraxi, widely regarded as one of the best PvP Shadow Priests in the entirety of Wrath Arena. You can check out his stream in the description below. And just so you know, this guide just gets you started. If you truly want to get a ton of ratings stupidly fast in Wrath, then you need to check out our premium courses over at Skillcapped after this video. With specialized guides at your fingertips from rank 1 players, we teach you how to master your class by showing you how to top damage, master your CC, and teaching you how to become a live lord. While everyone else is trying to slowly figure everything out themselves, you can jumpstart the process with Skillcapped, quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so in fact that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. Join us today, link in the description below. Anyway, let's get into the guide. Starting off with the best race on both the Alliance and the Horde. For those of you playing Alliance, you more than likely already know the answer to this. Human is just head and shoulders above any other race choice. In Wrath, the human racial will to survive acts and functions exactly the same as the PvP trinket Gladiator's Medallion. This means you can freely equip two trinkets of any kind, which in an expansion where trinkets alone are some of the most meta-defining pieces of gear, easily results in human offering exponential value. Although nothing comes considerably close, if you had to consider an alternative, the next best thing would be Dwarf, simply for the added defensive capabilities of Stone Form, which functions as a strong tool, especially when coming up against rogues and ferals. If you're stuck playing on the Horde side, the preferred race for Shadow is Troll. The reason for this being that you gain access to two very useful racials, the most impactful of which is Berserking. This increases your casting speed by 20% for 10 seconds, which is perfect for bursting or even recovering defensively. Alongside Berserking, you also get Da Voodoo Shuffle, giving you a 15% reduction to all slows and similar effects. Nothing game-breaking, but definitely beneficial. Alternatively, for a more defensive option, you can consider picking Undead. The benefit of being undead is that you gain access to Will of the Forsaken, which acts essentially as a second PvP trinket, but just exclusively for fear effects, sharing a 45 second cooldown with your Gladiator's Medallion. Next up, we've got Talents. With three different talent trees and 71 individual talent points, deciding where to put them can be incredibly overwhelming, so let's make it easy. What you see on screen now is widely regarded as the most optimal talent build for the majority of situations. Now, I know what you're thinking, you're just going to blindly copy this talent tree without even a second thought. Well, it's one thing having an optimal spec, but it's even better if you know why you're selecting certain talents. So what we're going to do now is break down and dissect those talents that we deem are worth knowing about. To start, we have to talk about Shadow Focus. This talent increases your hit rating with Shadow Spells by 1% per point, alongside also reducing the mana cost of your Shadow Spells by 2% per point. Hit rating is by far one of the most crucial stats when it comes to PvP, with all casters requiring to reach 4% in order to reach the cap. As we're getting 3% hit rating for all of our Shadow Spells from this one singular talent, it makes reaching that cap trivial and only requires 2% from gear, allowing us far more freedom in terms of gear selection and stat priority. Even if you're overly capped on hit though, this talent still remains worthwhile even just for the mana cost reduction on your spells. Taking a quick jump down the bottom of the shadow tree, the next talent worth discussing is Misery. This at max rank causes your Pain, Mind Flay, and Vampiric Touch to apply a debuff to the target, of which increases the chance for all spells to hit by 3%, alongside increasing the spell power ratios of your Mind Blast and Mind Flay. While the spell power increase is obviously fantastic, what's notable here is the added hit percent. This unlike Shadow Focus affects all spells, most important of all being Dispel Magic. One talent you might read over and wonder why we're not selecting in this build is Improved Mind Blast. This talent reduces the cooldown of Mind Blast while also attaching a 20% healing reduction to it. In theory, this looks great, but in practice, Shadow Priests primarily tend to play with specs that provide a healing reduction themselves, most notably being Mages with their Permafrost, Rogues with Wound Poison, and even Warriors with Mortal Strike. And putting 5 points into this for the sole purpose of getting 2.5 seconds off Mind Blast, which is already only an 8 second cooldown, just not worth it inside of an arena setting. Even in the case that you are playing with a class that doesn't bring a healing reduction, picking up this talent is still in most cases not going to be worth it at the cost of 5 talent points. A talent definitely worth every single point though is Twisted Faith. What this does is passively increase your spell power based off your total spirit. 
which together with meditation in the discipline tree makes spirit a very desirable stat both for combating mana issues as well as providing you with extra damage. On top of that, Twisted Faith will also increase the damage of both your Mind Blast and Mind Flay by 10%, assuming you have Shadow Word Pain on the target. Great for giving you that added single target pressure. Another very impactful talent is Pain and Suffering. This will cause your Mind Flay when cast on a target with Shadow Word Pain active on them to fully refresh the duration. This only requires you to a single tick of Mind Flay to refresh the Shadow Word Pain, not the full channel. To put how strong this is into perspective, you need to understand how mana is a huge issue for Shadow inside of Arena, and every little bit counts. With that in mind, Shadow Word Pain is always maintained on your target and costs around 700 mana. Mind Flay, however, costs under half of that at about 300 mana. Meaning, with this talent, you can not only refresh your dot, saving a huge amount of mana in the process, but also do some decent damage. Then we've got all the must-have abilities that you're picking up from the Shadow Tree. So crowd control like Silence and Psychic Horror, which are crucial for setting up kills, Shadow Form for the increased damage done and reduced damage taken, as well as the added benefits it provides to your damage over time effects, Vampiric Touch for the added damage, mana, and most importantly, Dispel Protection, and then Dispersion for the added survivability and mana gain. Then last but not least, moving over to the Discipline Tree, we've got the must-have talent and probably one of the strongest talents overall, Unbreakable Will. What this does is passively reduce the effects of stuns, fears, and silences by 30%. And with classes like Warlocks and Rogues running rampant in PvP, and almost all specs having some variation of stun, fear, or silence, just results in this talent providing you with exponential value. After putting in your talents, the next step in setting up your character is going to be picking your glyphs. Glyphs are separated into two categories, those being major and minor, in which we can have three of each. Starting off with major glyphs, the first one to get your hands on is the Glyph of Inner Fire. What this does is massively increase the armor provided by your Inner Fire by a whopping 50%, making it a must-have against any melee damage dealer. To go with that, you're then going to want Glyph of Dispersion. This is another must-have glyph, and while not that interesting, what this does is cut 45 seconds off your Dispersion cooldown, taking it from a 2-minute cooldown to 75 seconds, a must-have for both survivability and mana. Our third major glyph slot is open to customization and what you want to pick can depend heavily on your composition or even arena bracket. For double DPS, 2v2, or just any situation where you're not playing with a dedicated healer, we suggest Glyph of Power Word Shield. This adds an extra healing to your Power Word Shield, which is great for that added bit of sustain and survivability. Alternatively, if you're playing with a healer or just want a more aggressive option, then look no further than Glyph of Mind Flay. This just buffs the damage of Flay by 10% whenever you have pain on the target, which should always be the case. For a third option in those situations where you're again playing with a healer, we have Glyph of Fade. Fade for Shadow Priest, if you didn't know, is our key mobility tool, providing us with a freedom effect when used thanks to the talent Improved Shadow Form. This glyph, though, will just reduce the cooldown of Fade by 9 seconds, making it great for matchups or compositions where you greatly value mobility over all else. Now, for minor glyphs, these are by no means as important as major glyphs, but still provide decent benefits. One of them being Glyph of Fortitude. This heavily reduces the mana cost of your Power Word Fortitude buff. Although it's not common that you rebuff inside of Arena, there are some situations where you may reset and end up wanting to rebuff with Fortitude, and for those situations, you'll be kicking yourself if you don't have this glyph. Another must-have minor glyph is the Glyph of Fading. What this does is passively reduces the mana cost of Fade by 30%, and like we covered, Fade is a button we're regularly using for the added mobility it provides. And as mana management is such an integral part of Shadow Priests inside of Arena, anything to help with this, no matter how small, is of great benefit. Then, to round out our glyphs, the third and final minor that you'll want to pick up is Glyph of Shackle Undead. Shackle Undead is key when coming up against Unholy Death Knights, primarily for their Summon Gargoyle ability. This just adds 5 extra yards of range to your Shackle spell, so being in range to cast this sooner can surprisingly make all the difference considering just how strong of a cooldown Gargoyle actually is. Next up, we're going to be covering gear, but before we do, if you want to see the rest of our Shadow Priest series, it is available only at skillcap.com. There you can access our premium damage and playstyle courses, which were designed by expert Wrath of the Lich King players. And if that wasn't enough, we even offer site-exclusive arena commentaries, where you can get detailed matchup strategies to start playing just like a pro. And with a rating game guarantee, you have nothing to lose, so check out skillcap.com today.
Okay, so now we're at that point in the video where we get into the hot topic of gear. To do this, we'll be providing you with two separate gear sets, one of which being complete best-in-slot gear, which consists of a mixture of raid and arena point gear reliant on weekly lockouts and caps, so gives you something to aim for long-term. The other one being a set composed of easily farmable gear from a mixture of honors, heroics, rep, or even gold, none of which is locked behind weekly resets or arena points. We'll break down both of these gear sets shortly. But first, let's discuss stat priority, as even if you get a piece of gear that isn't on this list, you can easily use this as reference to see how that item shapes up in comparison. First of all is hit rating. Now this is a topic that people have varying opinions on. Some say 2% is fine, others say 5%, both are playable. Although we suggest aiming for 5%, this does put us way over the hit cap in conjunction with our talents. But with that in mind, this allows us to reach a level of hit where we don't have to worry about talents like divine purpose from paladins and heightened senses from rogues. And potentially missing a psychic horror or a psychic scream at the wrong time on one of these classes will be far more impactful than the small amount of additional stats we would be gaining otherwise. After a hit, you'll then want to reach the spell pen cap. This for Shadow is 130, as this allows you to play around the increased resistance of both priests and paladins, two very popular classes that you'll constantly be meeting inside of Arena. Once these caps are met, you'll then want to be prioritizing resilience for the added survivability, followed by spell power, and then spirit, followed by mana per five leaving our complete stat priority looking like what you see on screen now. The lack of priority on haste may come as a surprise, but in early seasons, haste just isn't that effective and will just end up causing you to have increased mana issues. All right, so back to the gear sets, starting with our Prebis list. This most notably consists of the four-piece Savage Gladiator's Mooncloth set. We want to prioritize Mooncloth over Satin for the superior stats allocation. This can all be farmed freely from Battlegrounds or Winter Grasp, as the only requirement is Honor. Also coming from Honor, we have some Deadly Gladiators off-pieces, that being Cloak, Bracers, Neck, and Ring. Despite being Deadly gear, all these off-pieces require no arena points. We suggest prioritizing buying these first as they are also included inside of our BIS list. The observant among you may notice that we also have a Hateful Gladiator's Ring and Hateful Gladiator's Belt. In regards to the ring, it's a good filler piece until you get something better. In terms of the belt though, we haven't suggested the Deadly Gladiator's alternative as it has a rating requirement of 1300. If you're able to reach this, then you should save your honor and purchase that instead. For both boots and helm, you'll want to be picking up the Titan Forged Hood of Salvation and Titan Forged Slippers of Dominance. Both of these are obtained from Winter Grasp Marks. With the boots, much like we covered with belt, if you're able to reach 1400 rating, you can skip these and instantly go for the deadly alternative. You'll then want to jump into some five-man heroic dungeon content and grab the Wand of Serdis from Gundrak and the Pendulum of Telerik Currents from the Oculus, and while doing so, farm enough emblems of heroism to purchase Ward of the Violet Citadel for your offhand. Non-human players can drop the Pendulum of Telerik Currents in order to obtain the Medallion of the Horde or Medallion of the Alliance. And for your other trinket slot, we suggest forking over the cash to purchase a Dark Moon card death, as this will be your best in slot trinket for Season 5. Then lastly, for weapon, the best is the Titan Steel Guardian purchased from the Auction House. But if you don't have the money for this, then the Nether Breath Spell Blade is a farmable option. Okay, so moving on to the full best in slot list now. To start, you'll notice the majority of this consists of the Deadly Gladiator set. We'll be aiming to pick up all five pieces of Mooncloth. Again, this is all from Arena Points. With the Deadly Neck, Bracers, and Cloak coming from Honor, and like we mentioned, replacing the Prebis Hateful Belt and Winter Grass Boots with the Deadly Treads and Court of Salvation. Our offhand and wand are the deadly gladiator pieces and both again obtainable from arena points. Then for trinkets, exactly the same as the previous list, we've got Dark Moon Card Death and Pendulum of Telerik Currents. If you're not human, just replace the pendulum with a standard medallion. Two very strong PvE pieces you should aim to pick up are the Torch of Holy Fire from Nexramus 25 and the Sigment of the Malevolent from the 10 man version. We'll also include links to both these gear sets in the description below the video. Next up, we have Professions, which are quite important assets inside Wrath of the Lich King. For this, we highly suggest picking up two professions specifically, being Jewel Crafting and Engineering. Jewel Crafting gives you the highest overall stat boost compared to any single other profession in the game. The reason for this being that you gain access to three improved Jewel Crafting gems, which can be used to gain extra resilience or spell pen, or even hit rating, depending on what you need. 
As standard epic gems are not available until Season 7, these jewel crafting gems provide a considerable bonus over the rare quality alternative as you can see on screen. Equally as important is our second profession of engineering. The reason? The hand-mounted pyro rocket. This is an enchant you're able to put on your gloves and utilize exclusively as an engineer. You can then use your gloves and will fire a rocket at the target, dealing between two to 3,000 damage. This is not only instant, but also off the global cooldown, meaning you can combine it with other abilities for some unexpected burst damage. This is something you'll want to be using for the entirety of Wrath, but it's especially good in Season 5 due to the fact the damage doesn't scale. So as a result, it's obviously going to be the strongest in the early seasons where players' health pools are at their lowest. Finally, to round out this video and to finalize setting your character, we've got macros. As Shadow Priest revolves heavily around both crowd control and utility, you're going to need quite a few macros for optimal play. A large majority of those are dependent on how you choose to interact with your party members. How you approach this is entirely personal preference, but regardless on which approach you take, you'll need macros for all of your important utility. We also highly advise against using mouse over macros for this in PvP. The abilities you will want macros for are primarily Power Word Shield and Dispel Magic. If you find for some reason you have free binds or even have two keyboards, you can also look to fit in macros for Flash Shield, Renew, and Prayer of Mending, but these three are by no means necessary. The first way to do this is via party macros, so having macros like what's on screen now. When using this type of macro, you'll have to pay constant attention to your party frames, as which slot your allies in can change on a game by game basis. Party 1 will always be at the top, and then Party 2 will be the second member of your group, regardless of your own position on your frames. The other route you can take with this is by inserting the player's name. This keeps your binds consistent, but requires you to update your macros every time you play with a new person. To do this, you just put replace player name with the name of your teammate's character. You'll of course need two of each macro if you're playing 3v3. And the final route you can take to interact with your teammates is by just having macros to target Party 1 and Party 2, and then having standard binds for each of your utility spells. This route, while definitely saving a lot of binds, is by far the least optimal, as in when taking this route, you're going to have to deselect your target. So having to press one bind to target your team member, another to dispel them, and then another to get back to your target is added button presses, and as you can imagine, suboptimal. You'll then also want some way to easily use your crowd control on your opponents. This again can be done in one of two ways, either by taking the focus route, which you can see on screen now, which will just allow you to use your crowd control on the player you currently have set to your focus, so you will want this for silence and psychic horror. And then the other way to do this is more bind heavy, but slightly more optimal, and that's with Arena 123 macros. Using these means you can interact with all three opposing members of the enemy team regardless of whom you have on focus or targeted. Something you will definitely want is some additional dispel magic binds. We have the ones for your teammates, but you will also want a separate bind for yourself. This is important as it will enable you to dispel magic debuffs off yourself even when targeting somebody else. Additionally, having a focus dispel magic is crucial for enabling you to quickly dispel buffs regardless of who you have targeted at the time. On top of that, it's very handy to have an easy way to apply your damage over time effects to your focus target. This can make getting up dots a lot easier. For some more specific macros, you'll also be wanting some way to easily cancel dispersion and mind control, which we recommend putting in mind flay or even mind blast. Much easier than accidentally clicking off your buffs when trying to leave Dispersion. And lastly, this all-in-one pet macro is perfect for your Shadow Fiend. What this does is put it on passive as soon as it's out, which fixes the wonky pet AI, and then pressing the same button a second time will redirect your Fiend to a new target if you want to swap targets. Alright guys, that about wraps up this video. Hopefully this provides you with all the information you need to get started. If you've watched this video up until this point, take a second to head down to comments and let us know how you're enjoying Wrath of the Lich King thus far. And of course, check out Skillcapped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you'll climb at least 400 rating while actively using our service. And if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we will see you in the next one.